thanks for having me. Uh, it's uh, I don't know if people are going to start getting tired of seeing my big face because I was I was with you yesterday. But uh, thank you for having me twice here. And uh, I am uh, well. I am Pablo Stanley. I am a designer, uh, illustrator, comics writer, turn CEO. I am a CEO now, Raji. Okay, so I, I'm I'm kind of like a big uh, I deal. Bow, right I now. bow to you. I bow to you. But I do remember <laughs> that you used to be in a print shop or something didn't you run the squeegees I, yeah, like? I i used to be the the one uh run uh, doing the squeegee thing like uh, that's how i started i started uh uh back in dude long time ago i've been a designer for a long time ago but uh well back then it, i wasn't a, a designer back in 1999 i started uh working in a print shop as the one that would put the the actual vinyl stickers on stuff uh on like signs on banners uh and also on cars like i used to put a lot of flames on cars on the sides Beautiful. people love their flames so i used to put that stuff and um and also really tall signs that's when i discovered that i uh i have a fear of heights i mean anyone would have a fear of heights when you have a really crappy uh ladder getting up there uh but yeah that's how i started and uh, uh and like now i'm in the ux product world and uh, I'm loving it. It's, it's pretty cool. And you're clearing a new path with this idea of illustration systems, which I know you'll talk about a little bit whenever you're ready to. Yes, we are. We're going to be covering a little bit about uh, illustration systems. And uh, more than anything, just uh, I'm going to do a demo of Blush, uh, which is a tool uh, that uh, my team and I are working on, which is also a Figma plugin. Uh, with this Figma plugin, you can add illustrations to your creations. Uh, and the, what is powering the, this are illustration systems. Like, um, and the idea of the illustration systems is like how you would approach just also uh, il, uh, like a design system, like a UI design system, where it's a, you put the buttons and the different states of the buttons, and those buttons are part of cards and, and all that stuff. Well, what if you use it also for illustrations? And uh, that's what we've been doing, and that's how we have been uh, uh, inviting uh, other artists to create their own illustration systems. And today, we're going to actually create our own illustration system, a simple one, a monsters. I'm ready. I'm, my system. body is ready for this. Let's do it. Let's yeah, let's do it. So should I just share my screen? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> let's get people to see what you're looking at. Yeah. I'm gonna okay, hop into cool. the file with you whenever you're ready to invite me in or let me know. Yeah, so uh, you can come in here to the, I think I sent you the link to the Blosh Playground. I see you here. So uh, here I have, it's just a, a playground where we can see, uh, let's say that you are designing a website and the different sections of a website, uh, like a hero section or a feature section or logging, all that stuff. Uh, sometimes you want to add something to, to bring a little bit of life uh, to the side. So that's when uh, Blush comes in. And with Blush, you can come in and uh, like, if you don't have it installed, by the way, you can just like uh, go to the community page on the plugins page of, uh, of Figma and just install it. And then you can just right click plugins Blush, and then it will open this window. You can move it around. And once you have this window open, you will see different illustration collections that have been made by different artists. And you can use any of these illustration systems. And so for example, let's say, I'm going to use this one that's called Crutes by BJ Berma. It's one of my favorite ones. Uh, once you enter here, you're going to see different things. You're going to see the different poses of the characters, just the characters by themselves. Uh, and also uh, different scenes that BJ already created. So if you are lazy like me, you will go straight to the scenes. So I, I'm just going to select this one, for example, mobile, that it's already created. I just uh, resize it, put it around here. It's looking pretty good. Uh, and now, now that the composition is there, uh, I can actually customize it. And there are many ways. So, so for example, here I can zoom in and you can see that, well, this person has a, a beard and, has, and it's kind of like walking to the left. Well, you can change that of the character, you can change uh, how, uh, oh, actually on this system, no, yeah, yeah, you can change uh, the, the lower body. So instead of walking, let's say that they're jumping. 
So now the character is jumping. And let's say that uh, instead of a beard, can you hear that? Can you hear the, the sirens in the back? I can, uh, I can hear it. It's lovely. Really great. Really yeah. great. Well, now it has a mustache <laughs> and, and so on. You can just go in and just change anything. Something that I love is just you can just press random, randomize, and just randomize that character. The, the rest remains the same. So now the character, it's, uh, it's kind of like doing yoga or something. And it's just scratching its leg. <laughs> so so that's, that's one. And, and then from there, you can also change the, the other character. You can change, for example, instead of a, a beard, you don't want it to have a beard, you can change that. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, by the way, you can also change the plant. So instead of uh, that plant, if you wanted like a green one, boom. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much just like how you use uh, this. But sometimes you want to, uh, uh, instead of uh, using a scene that is already created, you want to create your own thing. So let's, uh, let's use a different one. One that I like is, um, mm, 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 mm. let's go to actually Power Moves, which is uh, by Isabella Humphrey. Uh, she's, a, she's a designer, she's based in Mexico City. She's, she's amazing, she had, her art is so different. Uh, and you get to play with this stuff. So for example, there's a mixable body uh, and you can duplicate it. We can, let's duplicate it. Let's uh, create some rhythm here. Uh, let's put three of these characters and let's just press random on those three. And look at that. It just like- Oh yeah, I love my, these like quite. super poppy colors too. Yes, right? These it's, are They're great. so yeah. cool. Look at those like accessories. And <laughs> they're that they're I need those glasses. I need them. This, uh, it, it has this uh, Puerto Rican uh, shirt. Uh, some people might uh, correct me and, ex and tell me exactly what this is. I think it's uh, from an artist. Uh, but yeah, uh, 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 Isabella, she, she made like this pack. And again, you can come in here, you don't like that upper body, you can change it to something like the Puerto Rico uh, jersey. Yeah, uh, you can change the corn row to, let's say that it's a man bun. <laughs> now it's a man bun. And again, you can change anything. And if, at any moment, you can just like, um, like deselect, go do something else over here, la, 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 and come back. You don't like the illustration anymore? Don't worry, you can just click it and uh, play around with it even more like it it like blush remembers your illustration so you can at any time you can come back and customize it so now i that's have a question a, really quick on this one pablo so we've yeah. got all these options for like lower upper head and things like that and i'm wondering uh is this uh are those unique to or are they only specific to the illustration meaning another illustration library will they maybe not have earrings as an option Exactly. So this is uh, this was chosen by the artist. The artist created the system, and the the artist decided, uh, which is in this case is Isabella. She decided to have upper lower body for the the, the character's uh, head component. So for example, here you see that the head is separated from the expression. The expression is separated from the head. So you can change the expression while the head remains the same. Uh, you can change the the earrings for example, while the head and the expression remains the same. So it's not, so all the elements inside it are actually customizable. Uh, and that's a decision that Isabella made. And by the way, right now it's in PNG, but you can change this to SVG if you want to go full on, full resolution. Now, look at that, how beautiful. There's no, no pixels at all. So, uh, and once you're ready for, uh, for publish it to actually export it for for the way for uh, to, to to implement it you can uh, put it as SVG uh, and and yeah so like but this was a decision by the artist if you go to another one let's say that uh, here's another one let's uh, let's go to a different artist let's go to uh, uh, this one from Elena Cecilia uh, she made this one called big shoes and she also made characters she also made scenes let's uh, let's put one that is a sitting pose and another one that is uh, a standing pose. So now we create this, uh, uh, these two people here together and we're creating our own scene. Uh, so uh, Elena in uh, her characters, she only used uh, the face expression, the head, and also uh, the glasses. So for example, if I zoom in, I can change the glasses. 
I can change the expression. So like, let's do this one. I, I really love this oh, one. Look at I that. I love that one. Yeah. And, and she's right. They the, are big shoes. They're really big shoes. They, they are big shoes. Look at those shoes. <laughs> they're great. So, so yeah. And you can like, that is a decision that the artist made. Uh, the artist said, I am going to make this customizable. So uh, uh, it, it depends on the system. So you could, in, in theory, combine this expression with something else, but you will have to like turn it into SVG and ungroup it and do the whole magic. In the future, we want to do more of a mashup stuff where, with different artists, but right now, uh, those collections are separate. So very and, cool. And yeah, so uh, one, one that I really love, let me just show you this one because I, I, I think uh, I love this one that is uh, called Fancy Plants by Susana Ortiz. Uh, and Susana, she's a she's a visual artist, but a but a but a but a what, what do you call uh, like a painter? She's an actual painter. So this illustration system, these were actually painted with uh, with acrylic, and I I vectorized them and turned them into a, a system. What I told uh, 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 Susana was like, hey, to create this system, let's create uh, the top and the pot and the plant. So the flowers or whatever is going to be in the top and the pot, those things are separate. And that way uh, you can create a system where those things uh, you can customize. Just the, let's say that the, the top, you change it to that plant and the pot is going to be uh, this one. And now uh, we have that little plant. So you can customize that. But, it, but if you zoom in, you're going to see that all of this all of this, uh, if you see all of those pixels like that, it's because it was painted. I, I really like vectorized it, and I, I, I wish I could use all the colors and all the chaining right. of, of right. her paintings. Uh, but this was the best. But like with vector, you don't want it to be too right. much. So, uh, right. but I, th I think it still keeps that hand uh, uh, organic feeling, hand drawn organic feeling uh, that the uh, uh, paintings had. Uh, and and yeah, so uh, that's one that I that is one of my favorites because sometimes you just want a little bit of decoration and something that uh, makes your message uh, just pop a little bit more. Uh, so I would recommend use this one that's called Fancy Plants. Uh, and like fancy pants, but fancy plant pants. I love it. I'm curious for the ones that were like hand painted, when you switch to PNG mode, do you end up getting like the original sort of all that grit and texture that comes with that original painting or are they no. all through a vectorized process? No. So, <clears throat> So it is PNG, but but in reality, it's vectors that are turned into PNG. So uh, the base is actually still a, a vector. When it's a, a PNG, it's just a PNG version of the vector. So uh, the actual un, uh, uh, structure is made with it, with vectors with SVGs. Uh, so no, but. Um, we we do want, for example, we want to add a, a new, we're working on a new one that is like a 3D elements. So like 3D characters and 3D uh, components, but those need to be rasters uh, right. and like uh, to be, used, be able to use them. So uh, like uh, we're trying to find a way that it's lightweight and you can still use them really quickly. You can change them. So we're working on that, how to do that. Uh, Pablo, and, you should just design a 3D, uh, a 3D art tool within Figma. Have you ever thought about just, you know, creating a whole 3D modeling software? Why not do that? You know, uh, that might be one of, the, one of the things that we, at the end of the day, what we want to offer is that control, like that control over your scenes, your characters. And I think uh, if the models are already there and you can just change them, at least rotate them like this, rotate the camera, rotate the character. <sighs> It is possible because the 3D rotation could be happening here in the window, and then you just say update on the canvas. And on the canvas, right. it's still a PNG. Right. Uh, but, you, oh, dude, we're going to work on that. I love it. We do have a few questions, and I think you could probably blaze through these pretty quickly. Uh, Anonymous asked, uh, they, they said, they love this. I wonder about uh, attribution. I feel so good to be able to include the artist's signature under their work. Could that be like an extension where you could actually choose to to put that artist's signature or attribution right in the illustration oh dude like that is such a good idea that is such a great idea like uh anonymous I, you're great and uh, thank you so much anonymous so like I, I can see where uh 
maybe this one, and then there's a check box here, add attribution. You know, it's, it's, it's like a switch or something. Totally. That by default, it's turned off, uh, but you can turn it on if you want to. Uh, I do invite you to, uh, whenever you select one, for example, <laughs> well, let's not do myself. Let's do a, a different <laughs> artist. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, Diana Aguilar. She made uh, this character. Uh, and if you want to give attribution, you can just go here and, and really just find out more about Diana. Like it has links to, to their stuff. And if you want to add something about them, you can just like add it yourself. Uh, but I think we want to make it easier on you. So we should be able to do that. That is such a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. And the last question here is, can anyone add their illustrations to Blush, Blush or is it artist selected? Uh, I know you answered this last time, but I'm sure you could cover that. Of course. Know. Yeah. So uh, last time, uh, so, so yeah, we have, uh, uh, sorry, a little form. If you go to blush.design, there's a link on the footer that says become an illustrator. Sorry, uh, my computer is a little bit slow right now. I think uh, the browser slows down. But anyway, you're going to find in the footer a uh, link that says become an illustrator. We are uh, accepting uh, different illustrators and, and we're hiring hiring illustrators because uh, all these systems, all the artists have been paid. So uh, that that is for now. Later, we want to open it so anyone can become an illustrator and you can test it before you publish it. Uh, and, and, and we're going to put uh, uh, educational materials so you can you know how to create an illustration system. But for now, uh, and, and, and also how to make money out of that. We, we haven't made it public because we want you to have this as a source of revenue, where if you have one illustration thing that you did, maybe you posted on Dribbble, but you never did anything with that, uh, and you might be like, eh, let's just put it out there and maybe other people use it and then monetize it. We want to allow you to do that. Uh, so, but we don't have that ready. And once we have that, then anyone can do it. But for now, you can apply. You apply, there's your name, just a link, add your email, and we'll look at it and we'll contact you if, if we think that uh, uh, it adds to the variation of styles that we have currently. Because we, we don't want too many of them looking the same right now. So we might uh, uh, contact you. We see that there's an opportunity there to uh, add more di uh, diverse uh, types of and styles of illustrations here. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, so excited to like a lot of people have been applying and a lot of uh, few of the people who have applied, we, we have like, we, they have created a system. So it, it's been a great way for us to meet other artists. Uh, but yeah, okay. So I think uh, any other questions about like how to use Blush? I think it's pretty straightforward. It's just yeah, open the Blush plugin, insert something, boom, use it. There was one specifically about that, Pablo. Like, uh, can you speak to the advantages of using Blush's illustration systems versus when you might utilize an in-house or freelance illustrator for your brand or product? Oh yeah. So uh, I. I would always recommend if you can create something that is uh, custom, that is uh, specific to your brand, that uh, if you have the budget to hire an illustrator, do that. Don't don't use or turn illustrations. Uh, I, I would say do that because uh, then that you will get a better result on like how to like reflect the the values and sentiment and how to communicate better your brand and and your company. So. Uh, I would always recommend that over uh, using that. Having said that, we are working on teams. Uh, and I cannot show you the, the clients that we have right now. But uh, we, we're working on, you can upload your own illustration system and make it available for the rest of your team. So once you have hired an illustrator or your in-house illustrator uh, created your own system, then you can use Blush so the rest of the, the team who are not illustrators can use your illustration system. So the people in marketing, uh, uh, the people in uh, uh, content creation, like whoever wants to use the illustrations, they can use it as a system to use in Blush too. So, and, and that's something, uh, what can I show? No, I cannot show. Uh, but that's something that we're going to be make, making available. If you have 
the time, uh, budget to hire an illustrator, do so. That's going to give you way better results, always. I love it. I love that you're thinking about teams too. Uh, and I think that's a great door to bring brand new uh, illustrator content in. Maybe that maybe they don't want to be uh, an illustrator that's public on Blush, but I love that they could do it for teams. And the basically you could also have an in-house illustrator, right? Like somebody that's not just contract, but a full-time illustrator like committing to the system. Is that how you see it working? Yeah, exactly. So you create a system, which is actually something that we're going to be creating right now. Uh, we're going to create a system and by cr using these principles of how to create a system, you will later be able to use it with Blush inside your company and just with the people. So should we actually jump to that? I think Raji? that's a great segue to jump in, man. Let's do it. Boom. Look at this. So I have this ready, Raji. I have this idea for us to collaborate on creating a little illustration system of monsters, just little creatures, little uh, uh, critters. They're cute and happy. And we're going to be creating, and <laughs> you have your favorite already. Uh, you, uh, like all the elements are going to be part of a system. So that way you can create your own monster. So let me zoom in here. I, I started some sketching here. Like these are just to give us some ideas. Uh, but as you can see, all of them share, they look different, but they all share something like the proportions, how the shape of the body is. And that's important when you're creating a system. When you are, for example, uh, creating a, a type of monster, then let's say that this is the, the short monster, the, the, the small, like chubby monster. Then you create one component that is the chubby monster, and then all the elements are placed that way. Maybe you have a long or a big monster, but let's, for now, let's just create one. And for this, uh, the variations are going to be the eyes, the body, and the body and the arms are going to be one single uh, thing. And then the head top, the mouth, and the legs. So all of those things, the idea is that you can combine them and create different monsters. So for example, over here we have this cyclop eyes could be used with this body. And this mouth could potentially be used instead of this. Or this smiley, toothy smile could be used over here. That's the idea behind it. You create all the elements and then you can combine them. It's almost like using Legos. You know, but but with monsters. So, so let me show you how I started putting together the different elements. And let me actually turn Command Y, so you can see the uh, the actual frames, the, the 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 edges of the frame. You can see that uh, all the frames on the different categories are the same size. But just before that, so we have eyes. We have mouths, we have bodies, we have heads, we have legs. We only have one variation of them right now. And then when you put them together, then you create a monster. So over here, I created one monster that is, uh, let me close a Chrome because I think it's uh, grabbing some of my internet access. Uh, so all of these, this is one component, but this component is actually made out of all the other components. So you can see that uh, I have one mouth component, you can see here on the list. I have the mouth, I have the body, I have the eyes, we have the horns, and we have the legs. All of those are smaller components that make a bigger component. So once you have your master component, that's what I call it, your master monster, then you can, for example, go over here, and since I already created two variations of eyes, you can just change those. So instead of uh, the cyclopipe, I can say, hey, put the cute eyes, and instead of this mouth, with the fangs, let's do a big mouth. Big mouth that is like kind of like surprised. So there you go. Now you have a different monster just by changing two elements. Uh, but well, what if we create more elements? Are you down for that? I'm down for that. And I do, okay. I am wondering really quick here, uh, uh, two questions that I have. One is when you realize that like Figma, and I know that Sketch probably has this too, uh, like it has component swap outs. You can do that with that menu. Is that what, was that like a light bulb moment for you when you were like, oh, I could use this, I could use illustrations in this way. Like I could swap out bits of, uh, of this composite illustration. Exactly. That's uh, my, my first ever uh, illustration system was one that was called uh, 
uh, avatars. And it was just that, where it's like, A, uh, it's when illustration systems was becoming part of the, the things that we talk every day about, at least on design Twitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> illustration systems, and every, we we're all talking about that. We're still talking about it because of how important and how uh, easy our lives make and how uh, it, it can make a better uh, like uh, product development. Uh, something that made that possible is that suddenly tools started allowing you to create libraries with components that are mixable. Mm -hmm. like buttons, like switches, uh, and then you change it in one place and it changes everywhere else. So we're using libraries, right? And these assets that you can combine. And in the beginning, we were using them almost only for uh, like UI design systems, right. like interface stuff, interface components. Well, I was like, yo, we can use this for illustrations, of course. It's the same thing. I mean, it, it's something that, uh, that I think the gaming industry and the uh, uh, animation industry has been using for a long time. They've been using assets that are swappable this way. So why do they get to have all the fun, <laughs> right? So, not anymore, uh, not anymore. Not anymore, we can yeah. do all this stuff on Figma too. So, so yeah, so that's, it, that's the idea. Uh, one thing that is important, uh, as you can see here, uh, let me actually ungroup this, uh, n two things that are important, naming conventions. You want your groups to be named uh, so, are, so they're easily findable. So for example, here, uh, the ones that are eyes, I put eyes slash cute, eyes slash cyclop. So cyclop and cute are part of the same group that is called eyes. That way, on my component, I can easily swap it, swap them without having to, to search for them or anything. Uh, so that's one. Over here, for example, mouth, inside the mouth, Fo uh, folder or group, it's fangs, and another one that's called Big Mouth. Now, second thing that is important, you want to keep the size of the frame the same size. Uh, why? Because again, when you swap it, you don't want things to transform into just like, bleh. you know, you, you want to, it, that's why, for example, this frame is way bigger than the mouth, because I want to allow myself to have really big mouths, uh, but they're all going to be under the same uh, frame. So once I duplicate this, for example, let's say I duplicate this and I, number one, I'm going to detach the instance and I'm going to start by creating a new mount. I'm going to just actually just delete this whole thing. So now I'm in, a, in, an, in another uh, frame that is called small mouth. So on this one, oops, sorry. I'm going to add a circle. Let's just add an ellipse. Ellipse. Is that how you say it? Uh, let's uh, let's Nobody get in knows, there Pablo. And, Nobody knows. And let's just make a, a little uh, mouth that's a, that is like smiling, but it's just a small mouth. And now I can center it inside this uh, frame. So I'm going to center it. The cool thing, I love that you can center inside the frames, by the way. That's one thing that I love about uh, Figma. Once you have created a frame, you can center stuff inside of it. So, okay, so now this is still, this is just a frame still. So now I need to turn it into a component. So I can go, come on here, create component, boom. Now I create a component and I can go to my master and I can, let me duplicate this one, and I can swap the mouth. I can come in here and instead of big mouth, I can just say small mouth. Now it's accessible that way. If I hadn't put it inside the small mouth uh, folder, sorry, inside, inside the mouth folder, I would have not seen it here. I would have to like search for it. And you, you don't want to, to put more work on, on, on you. So that's why the, the naming conventions are, are important. I see that you're already adding uh, eyes there, squinting eyes, love it. Uh, I'm All going right. to add, I'm going to add legs because we don't have more legs. So we need more legs. Add... And I will swap out one over here as well, just to see, I don't want to use your instance, but I'm going to swap out some eyes really quick for those squints, just because I want to see like how they sit in the face. I might want to spread them a little bit further out. Uh, cool. Let's, let's make it like, these ones are going to be like more like big feet, like big shoes, like uh, Elena's work yeah just like that and maybe yeah maybe it's choose maybe they have uh 
And I'm going to add a rectangle here and I'm going to just duplicate this guy and I'm going to intersect these two and that way I will have a choose, choose. I want to be red choose, dope choose. That's what I call them. And then let's make them like Converse. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, uh. I'm curious, Pablo, yeah. do you, one thing as, uh, as an artist myself, drawing off, and, and even as a designer in Figma, when I'm drawing things just sort of out of the context of the character and knowing how they fit, like do you have any tricks or tips on how you, like right now I've got this little hair blob that I'm working on, but I don't know, like I'm just putting it on top of this one because I kind of want to see how big it's going to be. Like any thoughts around that? Oh man, sorry, I was very distracted doing this. <laughs> what, what, what do you ask <laughs> me? Uh, uh, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so like uh, you're drawing those legs and you're drawing them in the context, like there's not a lot of context. You're just drawing them, you don't get to see how they look in comparison to the character. Uh, do you have any tricks around that? Yeah, so uh, one way to do that is like turn it into a component. I'm going to turn it, let's change the name to be uh, Chunky. Chunky. Now there's a, a, a one component that is going to be called legs chunky. So I can come in here and let's change the legs to chunky uh, on this. And now I can pretty much just review, well, uh, preview the legs. I edit them here, but I preview them here. I know it's kind of funky. Uh, you could, in theory, just like detach this whole thing mm -hmm. and then uh, keep just do the legs and then turn the legs into a component. Uh, you could do that. Uh, I don't know. I, I think once you do it this way, you get used to just like uh, mm -hmm. uh, start like putting together the elements this way. You're changing them over here. I'm actually editing them over here on the component, but I'm previewing how they're looking down here. Got so it. let me group them, center them, and now eh, eh, they're kind of, kind of cool. <laughs> I did it. Uh, These are the dope shoes. Dope shoes, yeah. Love These dope are shoes. The very dope shoes. I actually kind of like it this way. Yeah. Okay, so uh, dope shoes, and you can just keep adding stuff. And that's the idea. You just keep adding elements, and then you can add as many variations as you want. Oh, you're adding hair there. Let me add another uh, body uh, shape. Uh, um. Uh, um, detach instance. Let's uh, let's uh, let's look at my. Let me look at my uh, elements here. I think I want to do this one is going to be a little bit hard, but no. I mean, you know what? I'm going to do this one, the one that is like kind of like a bat, like a circle, and and has like wings. Oh yes. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here, just as before. Let's uh. Let's add a, a, like a big circle here. That's going to be my body. Let's me, let me remove all this stuff. And let me actually preview the, oh, hold on. Let me turn this into a component. I call it bat. Ding, 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 ding. And let's change the body. Change the body to bat, and I can preview how the bat is going to look. So I can come in here. Let's uh, let's keep it like that. Let me uh, make make it a little bit fatter. So here I'm going to mirror angle and length, and that way I can just like make it like this, almost like chunky. I've been using the word chunky a lot, apparently. I but think yeah. it's all due to the COVID-19, right? Like that's the, the amount of weight we've all gained is because of... <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, yeah, you can say that. Uh, okay, let me add a, some, some color. What do you think the chunky uh, bat color should be? I'm going to say that it's like kind of purplish. Oh yeah, I was totally thinking purple. Let's go for a dark purple or light. 
yeah, uh, dark purple. I think you are on that. You're right on that. Let me add these uh, these wings. A little like soft wings. They're not really like bat wings, I guess. They're more like angel monster wings. He's just, he's just a he's a cuddly little bat. Yeah, exactly. So nothing but kind. Mirror angle that and length. There you go. There you go. Oh, I love that little wing. So it reminds me of Tangled, the movie. The little, the little uh, old dude. Hmm. I I never seen the movie. I need to. Pablo. Let's use that same color. Oh no, not stroke. Let's add a fill. Let's use that same color. Let's make it a little bit darker. Just a tiny bit darker, so it looks like uh, it adds a little bit of depth. So just like that, let's uh, flip it horizontally. By the way, I love that uh, if you don't know how to flip horizontally with keyboard shortcuts, is shift H. Shift H flips horizontally, and shift V shifts vertically. Eh. So simple. So simple, yeah. Uh, and you need to know that because there's no button to do that. I love it. So it seems like too, one of the ways that you architect these components is that you make sure that clip content is turned off. That way the hair could like bleed out of the frame if needed. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, the clip content is off. Uh, that way, again, the frame is always the same. And the, so that means that the position of your component is always going to be in the same, same place. But uh, the content is... Uh, uh, it's not clipped, and that way will look fine. Okay, so I'm going to test it over here. So I have a question about this one. So the head with the spiky thing, like in this case, I wanted the spikes. I just drew them naturally to be behind the body. Like, so what oh. should I do in this case? Do I mask it off? Like, That is one of the things that uh, makes the system a little bit complicated. Okay. Where you, need, you need to decide uh, one thing goes on top of the other. Right now, these are like prim primitive elements. Mm -hmm. They're not really that smart where they know, A, when I combine this element with this other element, then this happens. Uh, they're really just like dumb, like static elements that are combined with each other. So the, the layer positioning, the arrangement is important to know. Like, okay. for example, in a lot of uh, uh, illustration systems, we have to decide exactly that. Where is the, the hair going to be? Is it going to be on top of the body or behind the body? Sometimes you actually want it to be behind. So, right. and, and sometimes you want it to be top. If it's a long hair, you want it to be like, hey, like it's, it, it's right on top of uh, like the, the shoulders. So that's a decision you have to do early on, on when you're creating a system like this. How elements are positioned on top of the other one. I don't think this is too bad. I think I can work with this. You yeah, know, it, it looks adapt good. Like I'm doing here. So I think that works. I think it works too. Let me change it. Let me test it with the other uh, mm, mm, mm. head, horns, spiky. Oh, crap. What did I do? Oh, I didn't change the hair only. I changed the whole thing. Blobby hair, spiky. Hey, it, it actually looks also pretty cool with, uh, I don't know, you can see down here. Uh, I'm checking. I'm look at that. It's looking good. Hey, hey, look at look at our unholy child that we've created. Yeah, <laughs> Pablo, we're parents. We are, yeah, or unholy child. <laughs> I love it. So, so yeah, that's the idea, and I, I think uh, it's a it's a fun even thing. Like I, I would say, it's a fun exercise with your team. Just go ahead and and create the different uh, components of like faces and try to draw yourselves. Like try, try to yeah, draw your colleagues uh, and, and, and using a system like this. this uh, is I awesome. challenge you. I think we, Pablo, can we share this little monster file out with everyone so that they can like build their own and maybe share online what they've made? Of course. So I think uh, now I'm part of the, um, I can share files in the community. So I think I'm going to put this uh, public so people can just duplicate it. 
Love it. So yeah. cool. I would love to see what people can create with all their uh, awesome creativity here. Um, yeah. All right. It is a starting point or even just use it as a way to learn how to create your own. Uh, like, an, or if you want to expand on it. That's, that's the idea of, of sharing these kinds of files, right? Where it's uh, uh, like you build on top of uh, other people's work or that inspires you to do your own. And that's, uh, I don't know, that's actually how we got Blush too. Uh, Blush just like came from the idea of like uh, collaborating with other artists and, 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 and put together a system that is like with different elements that are coming from different ideas. Uh, so cool. Okay. So uh, I think uh, I'm going to continue working on this. I will put it live uh, soon, soonish. Uh, and I think uh, my URL on Figma, I think it's, uh, how do you say the, on Figma, the, the URLs? Uh, so you're going to do figma.com slash, and then it's the at symbol. And Figma. then whatever your com. handle you chose. I hope yeah, you got Pablo. Which I think it's Pablo. Yes, nice work. You claimed it. I claimed just Pablo. I, I claimed. It. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be my. Uh, the file is going to be there. It's going to be the or first file. My first file. Yeah, oh. I'm excited about it. Pablo's day uh, out. This is this is so cool. Can you? I'm curious, and I and I loved you sharing this last time. Can you share um, working with selection colors? Um, and I don't know what's your what's your impression of working with selection colors. Uh, that feature in Figma and using Blush at the same time or using illustration systems? Yeah, of course. Let me uh, share my screen. Pow, pow, pow. One thing is one thing actually that I really love about uh, Figma, this little feature where uh, once, once, for example, these elements, like Blush allows you to change the color of the skin, for example. This is coming straight out of the, uh, the plugin. You select the element and you can change the color of the skin, but uh, the rest of the elements, we still don't have the, the feature to change the color, the overall color palette. Uh, but you can do this with Figma if you turn it to SVG. And once it's SVG, you can just go over here on selection colors. You can see that uh, this, these two illustrations are using 23 colors. So you can come in here and just change any of them. So for example, let's change this one. And instead of uh, that yellow mustardish color, let's change it to, and I think uh, it, was, it was the buttons, right? Let's, let's zoom in so we can see Was it, it the earrings? I'm the earrings too? I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's many different things. The shoes too are right. changing. So, uh, 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 Isabella used the color palette uh, consistent and used the same colors in different elements. So let's use, let's change this one. So let's change it to something that is like orange. So the words here, you can change those. So, or you can just like, hey, if you want to a, this color to be the same as this, you can just copy paste and now you're using less colors, right? So now your, your, your selection is going to be Let's say that this one, you want to replicate it here. They're too close, so let's just uh, minimize the amount of colors. You can just go ahead and do that. Copy, paste, paste, and now you're reducing the amount of colors. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I, I, this is a feature that you can, like out of the box, like once you turn your blush illustrations to SVG, you can do this. Um, yeah, is, is that what, what you wanted me to show? Yeah, it's, I've, I've just found this to be like, because we at Figma also have an illustration library, an illustration system as well. Um, mm. not, as, not as cool with all these swaps like this. Uh, I love this. But what I love about selection colors is that often you've got all this range of color and you really want to reduce. So let's say that mustard yellow that you're on right now, if you go to that color um, and you select a little target, there it'll actually select all items with that color so you can now selectively oh. apply two different areas if you didn't want to change the shoes but you want to change the earrings or vice versa you could do that the other thing that i love about this is that and i'm just like hardcore smitten with selection colors it's just so powerful once you get used to it if you ever decide that you want to create a color library for yourself you can now actually create styles from those colors and then reduce this redundancy of needing all these different hex codes, you can actually just create a style and be like, this is my brand vibrant blue. 
and create it to be your own illustration color library too, not just, yeah, like electric. Uh, when I designed our little color system for illustration at Dribble, we did all like seafoam dream and shells, and it was all like porpoise skin. So we wanted to create like, like really fun themed names, but this way you can actually keep it in sync. That way if ever you're like, ooh, that electric blue needs to be not so hot, maybe a little, like a little less saturated, you change that color of one place, now it changes across, say you have 10 different illustrations, boom, it's across 10 different illustrations. There you go, and, and I'm pretty much just doing it here already. Yeah, you're doing perfect. Whereas like, uh, if, 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 like again, let's say that uh, we apply electric to this, right? Now that we apply that, uh, we can come in here and edit it. Let's edit the electric color, and whatever I'm using that uh, color, it would change. Totally. And yeah, it saves you a ton of time. And also, not only that, but it allows you to experiment really quickly, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, sometimes like, oh, I don't want to create a, a system like this because it's going to take me time. Uh, yeah, in the beginning, but it's also going to save you a ton of time later when you don't have to go and search for the colors and change them uh, one by one. You can create the system, use them, and then change them later as much as you want and see in, in, in context the, how they look. Totally agreed. What, lately, when I, when I start something new, I start a new project, whether it's UI or it is like illustration, I absolutely start by creating uh, shared styles just because it really, you think a little bit at the beginning, you put a little bit of planning into it, but it becomes, it saves so much time on the other end. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, now that I have that system, I can come in here and replace the colors that are too similar, for example, and just turn them into that other color that is called rust, for example. Uh, and, and that way, I'm reducing the amount of colors. And let me actually add this one. I want to add as a new one, sky. And yeah, let's turn this into sky too. <laughs> and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Dark. I think we've got a slew of questions. These people love it and they're, they're ready to ask you questions. We've got about 10 minutes, Pablo. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, I'm, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> let's, let's hear those. I think you are. I know you are. Uh, okay. So I think we may have answered this, but I'll just ask it again. Can you split color groups, uh, shoes separate from shirt? Uh, do you have any advice for that? Uh, do, can you, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, am a, I, I didn't understand the question. Can you repeat it? Yeah, so Deb asked, can you split the color groups, uh, e.g. shoes separate from shirt? And I think we showed with that targeting that you could do that, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you could just change the color of it. So you select the shoes and, oh, I see what you're saying, where it's like you select the target and then can you just unselect some of that stuff? or just yeah. select the specific elements. Uh, I think uh, that you have to do it manually though, right? You have to like. I think so, because I think what was happening with those, they had the raw hex colors in your SVGs. And then let's say you, you change that green. Well, the green's tied to shoes and shirt. I think you yeah. may have to hit that target select. It'll select both and then deselect the items that you don't want. And exactly. then it'll split them. Exactly, and change the color, and now they're split. Now they're not. Uh... Totally. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see, here's another one for you from Anna. If I am doing a website for a company and use those illustrations from Blush, can they be legally used for the branding of the company? Yes, you can use the uh, illustrations freely for uh, personal commercial use. Uh, the only thing that we don't allow you is uh, uh, you said for selling like swag with them. Uh, and if mm -hmm. you do want to, to do that, uh, I think uh, you can contact us uh, and that will be a deal that we would talk about like also with, and, and swag that you want to sell. Like uh, that's something that uh, on, on our license we, we, we don't allow, but we do allow you to use it on your brand, on your social media, on anything. We, we, we're happy that you use it that way. Uh, and, and no attribution needed either. So you, it's pretty much just like a almost public domain. We have our own license, uh, but it's almost public domain. The only thing that we don't allow is uh, for you to uh, sell stuff like 
like that. But you can use it for your marketing, anything. Uh, awesome, thanks for answering that one. Uh, here's another one here. Uh, how do you create, and maybe we already answered this one, Pablo, how do you create a master component that contains all of these elements? Yeah, well, uh, pretty, uh, you want me to show you? Yeah. Let me show my screen. And actually, let's create a monster again. So, uh, 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 so here, this is my master component, right? The one that has all of those. I already created it, but let me create a new one. So all I did was uh, duplicate these elements, put them here. Uh, uh, um, let's go over here. Let's add some legs. And now let's center all of them. Now they're all center, and ah, they're, they're, they're kind of cool. Yeah, uh, they're, they're kind of well aligned. And now I select all of them, and I turn them into all of these components. I turn them into a new component. Now this is a new uh, master component, whatever you want to call it, the, the component. That's what it's called. So now this one is the one that has all the assets inside it, and you can change those. Awesome. Okay, uh, here's another one from Anon our dear friend Anonymous. Uh, what tips do you have for focusing yourself so that you can build a system constructively and efficiently? Some life advice for you. Pablo, what do you got? Uh, how do you focus? Like, well, I would say don't jump onto creating a system before you do a lot of sketching, you do a lot of whiteboarding, you bring other people to the conversation, you know what the style you want to approach, mm -hmm. like all that stuff that you did your mood board, you did your sketching, you did your talking, you have the buy-in from all the different people uh, that need to, the, the different stakeholders, it's just like any, like any other design process, right? You want to bring the people that need to be part of that conversation in, you get their thumbs up on something, you create a couple of illustrations, a couple of scenes, you show them now, hey, this is, this is how it's gonna look a little bit. Yeah, that one, yeah, that's looking great. Boom, you're ready to create a system. But don't jump into creating a system before experimenting, before sketching, before going through all that process. Because uh, it's going to be, then you're going to get too attached to the system. You know, but I already did the system. We have to do it that way. And it's like, no, 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 you, you should have sketched it first. What the hell? <laughs> and it seems like that's how you started out this project with the artists as well as you didn't say here's the system put your stuff into these like slots and holes and sizes you wanted to hear first what they what they wanted to express we want earrings we want this and then you developed it around that right exactly like uh with the artist uh i created a, a creative brief uh, just like any other like a uh, creative project like this create a brief where I give some Specifications of how the system could work how how a blush system would work where I explain the things that I explained today it was like hey, the components um, Smaller components that are part big part of bigger components, but then the style I, I did put some requirements on like hey, if you're creating characters if you're creating people uh, try to be uh, include be as inclusive and, and add diversity in your illustrations when so people feel represented. Those were one some of the rules, uh, and also try to uh, uh, add uh, people with different uh, uh, abilities and, and and different beliefs. That was one of the requirements if you are adding people and, and humans, uh, so people feel represented. But then the rest is like go crazy. And you, you tell me what, it, what it, like, here are some examples, but really I, I want you artists to be the one that decides this. So they started like first, let's, let's start with a mood board. That was the first thing. Some, some mood board and maybe some sketches. Some of, some of the artists will do some sketches, but the mood board was like, hey, these are the colors that I like. This is the style that I like uh, from different artists where it's like, hey, I like the style. It's like, oh, okay, cool. This is, I can see a theme here. And, and they, even for them, they, they started like making those decisions. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this direction. And sometimes different artists would do like even two mood boards. Should we do, should we go this way or this, this way? And, and for me, I was like, which one do you like the best? <laughs> which one are you more excited to, to work on? 
and and usually it was like the one that I actually liked the best too. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, and then after that, okay, sketching. They would do some sketching, just like rough pencil sketching. A, starting to look good. If I saw something that might create some problems for them, I would voice them. Or it's like, hey, be careful with, for example, the, the problem with the hair. Uh, a, be careful with some positions. They might not fit well in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, uh, if you want to do very natural positions where they're flowing and stuff like that, uh, then you, you might have to add many variations to your system. So be careful mm -hmm. with that stuff. Uh, and, and yeah, and just like a guiding them, but it's just like step by step. It's, and then suddenly like they will get to that point where uh, it, like the frames are start to put, being put together. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a very good answer. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah. We have, I think we only have a few minutes, but we have like a slew of questions. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep them coming if, you, if you're cool with that. Yeah, of course. All right, so Ying asks, are illustrators compensated in any way? Yes, right now, uh, illustrators are compensated. Uh, they are paid for their work. Uh, they, uh, it's, well, it's 50% uh, for initiating the work. Uh, so it's like a contract job. Right now, that's how we're doing it. Uh, I know that's not very scalable, uh, but right now, well, Blush is not really making a lot of money. You, if, if you want, if you want us to, to hire more illustrators, then uh, get on the pay subscription <laughs> so we get more money. Uh, but uh, right now we have some some budget and, and we're hiring illustrators. Like we want to get to the point where there's enough users and there's enough usage that we can create a model where there's a marketplace, where there's a, uh, artists are paid by usage. But right now, if I tell an artist, oh yeah, you're going to be paid by usage. Uh, they're gonna get pennies, and I don't want that. So right. we didn't we didn't want that. So we decided to pay them, pay, per, pay them fairly for their work, and 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 yeah. So that's how we're doing it. Later, we're going to uh, uh, have it a, a, a different system, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, artists can make uh, revenue in a different way. Well, it seems like as an artist myself. Uh, if you don't know what usage would be, then like it doesn't seem that appealing. It's like great, so three people download it, and I've got five dollars or whatever. Exactly. Like, not, exactly. But, but if like, Lush is huge and there's a ton of people like buying this, then usage becomes like a very uh, a well-paying thing for artists. Exactly. So that's where we want to get. Whereas like a we, well, we I'm, I'm talking about now business plan or here, with Lush, <laughs> but uh, but it's important for the artists, right? Uh, whereas it like is. a yeah, it's a lot of uh, free users right now. How how yeah. can we monetize people who are using this for free? Well, we could add some uh, paid advertising inside. For if you're a free user, you, maybe there's going to be some illustration systems that are from different brands, which is great, you know. And then those free users are free to use it, and then that paid it gets distributed across the different artists again by usage. Who got their illustration system used the most? Those are the ones that get uh, uh, paid a little. It's, it's almost like on Spotify. You get uh, paid by place and the amount of usage that is uh, is done. That is one by advertising, and the other one is by uh, subscriptions. The the money pool that is uh, uh, gotten from uh, subscriptions, then it gets distributed again throughout the artist by usage. Uh, right now, like if if I were to put we put that, that plan. Right now, our usage is not as, as big, so maybe the, the money wouldn't be as great for an artist. So, and to create a system is a lot of work. So we didn't want to do that, and, and that's yeah. why we wanted to pay uh, artists up front. Uh, I think as a fellow artist, I think that's super rad of you. I know that so often artists get uh, kind of put by the wayside and, and put under some kind of a commission model or, or some kind of usage model where they're just making pennies. I think about so many websites out there uh, so Pablo, I think that's awesome. Uh, I have one last question I can ask, and I feel like it could lead you into talking about kind of the future for you, the future for Blush, so you can you know, say the things you wanna say. Uh, Anna asked, is Blush only for Figma? Uh, what are the future plans, like Illustrator, Photoshop, Sketch, what, what's the plans? And then uh, I'm just gonna let you close it out, man, and, and say what you wanna say to these fine people. Yeah, uh, well, 
thank you, Raji. And and yes, so our vision is to to make Blush available for anyone. Right now, it has been a great experience to put it in Figma because, uh, like I, I think I said it be, uh, yesterday, the Figma API makes it really easy to just uh, put inside a web view to uh, play around with the elements inside Figma with a web view. So our web app is actually what's running there on Figma. So after that, we're going to start doing that with other design tools and other developer tools. And so we're looking, the next thing we're actually uh, putting out there is, uh, is a Chrome extension. That way you can use it on, on Google Slides, you can use it on, on, a, right. on, a, on, a, on a paper, Dropbox paper, whatever. Like if you're doing something creatively, uh, you're using a creative tool on the browser, on Chrome, then you can just insert one of our illustrations inside it. So uh, without losing context right there, it, it inserts it. it. So that's, that's the next step. And then after that, yeah, like different design tools. So uh, uh, like the ones that have an API, we, we are slowly getting there. We're a small team, so, uh, but the good thing is that we're starting with the ones that allow something like Figma, where it's a, there's an API that allows a web view and interact mm -hmm. with the elements with that web view. So uh, that should make it easy because we have the web app. Uh, that is so rad. I didn't even know you were thinking about doing the, the Chrome plugin. What a great idea. It's so yeah, cool, yeah, man. Yeah. We, so we cool. have it working and, and we're so, super excited. We, we're gonna release it soon. Uh, You've already got it working? Because, yeah, we, we just need to get approved by Google because uh, as a developer and just put the, mm -hmm. the, all of that stuff. So hopefully we get approved soon. Uh, that is so cool. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, remember Pablo's Pablo Stanley on Twitter. I shared some links in earlier about Blush, Blush.design. Of course, you can go do this in the Figma community, uh, either the community or the plugins tab. You can just search for Blush. Boom, you've got this plugin. It's right in Figma, and you can just drop these illustrations in and mess around. Pablo, dude, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. You're creating something so cool. I can't, this is one of the coolest plugins I think that we have on Figma. And uh, all out of you and your team's brains. I love what you're doing for artists too, man. Thank you so much, Raji. Thanks so much for coming. And thanks everyone. Go use Blush or even go make your own system. I, 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 tag go me. Apply. I want to see that. Go apply uh, on Blush to be an artist as well. Yes. Also, yeah. All right. Well, bye from bye -bye. Utah. Enjoy Mexico City, man. You too, man. Enjoy Utah. <laughs> <laughs>